So you want to go lobster diving, when and where should you go? That's what we're going to talk about today and what we like to focus on here in Southern California. So swell. Swell is going to play one of the largest roles in our lobster diving. It's going to make it difficult to get out. It can cause us to lose a lot of gear on our way out. And then once we're out in the water, swell can create surge, which basically is movement under the water that can throw you around back and forth. So you can imagine if you're out there trying to grab something and your body is constantly moving around back and forth, it can be difficult to grab an object like a lobster. So when we talk about swell, it's also important to recognize the difference between the two types of swells. We have ground swell and we have wind swell. Wind swell tends to have a shorter period, so the waves are stacked up closer to each other. So this can make it difficult when getting out um, as the waves are so close to each other, you're constantly being bombarded by waves. But wind swell tends to have a little bit less power and less surge once you do get out. Now, ground swell, these waves translate a little bit deeper underneath the water. So the ground swell can create more surge and kind of create that movement in the water. But the good thing about ground swell is the period tends to be longer. So there's longer gaps in between the waves and you tend to have longer lulls in between different sets of waves. So it's a little bit easier to time your entry into the water in a lull. Now the big danger with surge while lobster diving is that the nature of the structure we are diving around when lobster diving is where we want rocks, cracks, um, different rock structure where these lobster tend to hide. Now if surge is moving you back and forth, it can throw you into these rocks. It can push you underneath caves. It can put your head under something that causes your mass to come off. So diving in surge definitely poses a lot more risks um, when diving and we tend to see more surge when we're diving in larger ground swell. For beginners, we don't recommend diving in anything larger than three foot of swell. Um, now, more experienced divers will dive in conditions much larger than this, but you know, they put in the time, they've got the experience that lets them feel comfortable in these situations. Now, I strongly urge you to get connected within the community, different things like Facebook groups, email threads, um, clubs, spearfishing clubs, free diving clubs, snorkeling groups, anything that can kind of help you get connected within the community um, because while many different factors can help you determine what the conditions are, the best condition reports are going to come from first person reports. So connecting into these communities can help you um, ask questions that you might have to get answers and also get a better idea of what the current conditions are in your area. So the next question comes down to when should I dive? What time of day should I dive? Um, you'll quickly notice that the large majority of people are going out at night diving for lobster. Reason for this is that lobsters are nocturnal. So at night they actually come out of their holes, out of their caves and begin to forage for food. So if you go out at night, you have a much better chance of seeing these things out in the open, out of their holes, in a place that's much easier to grab. Now, you can go lobster dive during the daytime. It's kind of nice when all the lights are on and you can see everything, but it's good to note that most of these lobster will be in their homes, in their holes, tucked up. So it's going to be a lot harder to find them. You're not as likely to find them out in the open. You're really going to have to look into holes, nooks, crannies to see if you can find them and see if they're in a place that's accessible for you to grab. Now, the thought of going out and diving at night can be quite intimidating. And if you're a little nervous about doing this, what I suggest is start with a daytime dive. Um, a good way to transition into being comfortable diving at night is going out during sunset. So you have the benefit of diving while it's still light out and then you can stay in the water during that transition from light to dark. And it's a nice slow transition of from having the lights on to slowly turning the lights off. I think this is gonna be one of the best ways into warming up into diving at night. Now what time to go at night? There's been a lot of times when I've been out diving in a spot and the lobsters aren't crawling. They're not out in the open. You know, I got in the water at seven o'clock and I got out at 11 o'clock and it was not very productive. 
only to find out that my friend went out to the same spot, but he went out at 11 and stayed in the water until three in the morning and got out. And the lobster diving was incredible. The crawl was great. Lobster were everywhere. And so I think this kind of goes to show that sometimes the lobster wait until the very dark hours of the night to truly come out. So while it might be a little more difficult with the schedule to dive during those, you know, 11 to like early in the morning times, oftentimes that's the best time to do it uh, because these lobsters are really waiting for the night to get very dark so that they can feel safe to come out in the darkness of the night. The next thing a lot of lobster divers like to pay attention to are the slack tides or the changing of tides. The moment where tide is coming in and then it slowly transitions from coming in to stopping the slack and then reversing to coming back out. So slack tide is a nice moment because it's when the water is standing still. It's not moving. You're going to find less currents and oftentimes we can find the best visibility during a slack tide. Now there are high tide slack tide and low tide slack tide. I tend to find the best visibility during the high slack tide because all that time water has been pushing in towards the coast, filling in, and it tends to push a lot of sand and debris and sediment that gets kicked up by waves closer into the coast so that you can get just back out past that point and find some clear windows. Whereas the low slack tide, I tend to find, starts to pull um, sand and debris out into the open, kind of where you would be diving. When you look at the curves of a tide chart, you can see the slack tides are here at the top and the bottom. Now, in between these moments, when the line has the steepest grade, that's when you're going to find the most movement of water. And the more water that is moving, the more currents it's going to create and the more it can kind of stir things up a little bit. Now moon phase is also going to play a big role in your lobster diving. Knowing what moons affect the tides is a big thing. So full moons and new moons are when we have some of the largest tidal swings. We have the largest change um, from our high tide to our low tide and we have the greatest amount of movement within the water. Whereas quarter moons um, having what we call neap tides are much smaller curves. There's much less movement of water from the high tide to the low tide. So less movement of water is going to create less currents and typically we're going to find better visibility. Now on top of that, moon phase is also important to pay attention to with the amount of light that's reflected off the moon. Lobster come out at night because it's dark and they use darkness as an aid to camouflage themselves so that they can feed. Anything that's nocturnal is nocturnal to kind of protect themselves under the blanket of darkness. Now under a full moon, there is quite a bit of reflected light off the moon into the water. And I find that the lobster know this and it's brighter and they tend to not crawl as much on a full moon as say on a new moon when there is very little light reflected off the moon and the water is very, very dark. Now that being said, I've seen lobster crawling on a full moon and I've seen lobster out when all the signs say they shouldn't be. So while this is a general guide, just know that there's really no way to totally predict what the conditions are and what the lobster are going to be doing. Uh, having a dive log is a very good thing to have. And when you get out on those nights when everything is working out really good, make note of it. Look at what the tide was, the time of day, all these different factors that went into this moment that led to very productive uh, lobster fishing. So this should give you a good idea of when the best times would be to lobster dive, right? We want minimal wind, we want minimal swell, we want neap tides with very minimal swell movement, um, diving at slack tide, preferably a high tide. But just know that you can dive in any of these times and catch lobster. So now you should have a good idea of when to go lobster diving. The next phase is going to be where to go lobster diving. I hope this stuff is useful for you guys. Just make sure, be safe out there. It seems like every year during lobster season, we end up losing somebody um, to the ocean and it's the last thing that we want. So please be safe, uh, make sure that you're visible, make sure you have your lights, make sure you have a dive buddy, you have a game plan. Be safe, 
only dive when it is good to dive, when it is safe to dive, and know when um, to say no, today is not a good day to dive. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, stick around for more, and hopefully see you guys out there catching some lobster.